way that I thought I would. And the way that the Lord gave, it, gave this to me, the Lord was talking to me and He said, I knew you in the beginning and I knew you all the way in the end and I knew I know you all the way in the middle. Yeah. Everything about your life, I knew everything that was ever going to happen yeah. to you all the way through. And how the Lord gave it to me, you know, this book, I just picked it up down in Brother Dave's office in order to illustrate this. The Lord said, if you'll notice the first page on this book, it's also the last page of the book. Yeah. <laughs> it's just folded over. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> this first page right here, if you trace this first page, carry it through there and pull it on back, it's one and the same page. Yeah. Right. When God formed you, He formed you knowing the end from the beginning. He wrote the back page. He wrote the end first. <laughs> he wrote the back page first. Then he backed up and he wrote, started writing the first page. <laughs> so God knew who you were and what you were going to be before he ever even created you. That gets a little deep, don't it? Let's let the Lord just minister to us tonight. Amen. We go to the neighbor and say, the Lord knows the end from the beginning. Let's get into that a little bit because the Lord has quickened this to my heart. And I pray, I pray that this message tonight and God will give me the utterance. And you pray for us too, that the Lord will give me the, the, the utterance of the words to put into uh, expression this that God has been has ministered to me personally that has really brought strength and encouragement to my life. And you know God's people needs to be strengthened and encouraged in this hour. Amen. A lot of people are giving up right now. This is no time to give up. There's no time to give out. It's time to go all the way. Isn't that right? Romans chapter 8 We'll begin with verse 24. Romans 8 and 24. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? <clears throat> Y'all got it? Got it. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience Wait for it. The Lord is telling us that we are saved unto a hope. Jesus saved us. The Lord saved us. But He saved us to bring us into a hope. Or a destination. Isn't that right? And since He saved us for this purpose here, then have you know that we can't see in the natural ourselves in this Hope. That's coming to the fullness of it. That's right. Yeah. But see, that's where faith comes in. He called Abraham and he called him the father of many nations and he did that before Abraham ever had a child. That's right. That's right. So Abraham was calling himself Abraham. God gave him his name, changed his name from Abram to Abraham in order for him to realize that he was the father of many nations. God said... I have made you. I have already made you, past tense, the father of many nations. Yeah. Amen. So Abraham had to have faith to believe what God said, but he had to have hope to wait to go to the end of it. The hope is the prize. Yeah. The hope is the destination. That's the place that we're wanting to reach. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? But you can't see it right now. I can't see it right now. In fact, when we look at ourselves, we can't even picture ourselves in that. But let me know what God is wanting to do. He's wanting us to be able to picture ourselves there. Yes. That's the reason so many people are giving up today. Let me tell you something, saints of God. If you do not have a destination and you don't know what that destination is, you'll get weary before you ever get there. That's right. Come on now. And we're living in a generation right now like the children of Israel was. They came to the, the land of promise and they didn't go in and possess the land and they went back out in the wilderness 
And at the same time, they were some those older ones in the wilderness, they were coming to the end of their dream and they were dying in the wilderness. But at the same time, in the same group of people, there was another group that was coming alive and they were looking forward to that hope that was out there which is possessed in that land. That's right. Amen. And sitting right here in this congregation tonight, there's people that are just hanging on and just existing because they have lost their hope. Right. They've lost their vision. They don't see themselves ever obtaining or going anywhere any further than where they are right now. If we do not see ourselves spiritually any further than where we are now, we're dying where we are. There's no such thing as a sitting dormant in our Christian life. You cannot sit down and wait for the rapture of the church to take place. You're dying while you're waiting. You can't sit and just wait to see what turns up and see what's going to happen. We've got to have a goal and a destination and we better know where we're going and we better have a determination. I'm going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to have hope. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Amen. We're living in a now generation. Uh-huh. Give it to me now. Yeah. Don't tell me nothing about eternity. I don't want to hear anything about heaven. Don't tell me anything about the future. I want what I want, and I want the promises of God, and I want them right now. Uh But 1 Corinthians 15 says, if only in this life, in Christ, we have hope, we're of all men most miserable. So if we have just got Christ in our life and we're settling for being a good Christian and trying to be good moral people until Jesus comes back, you're miserable. That's right. That's Amen. Right. And I'll be miserable if that's all I have. There is a goal that God has got in mind, and we must see that goal. And if we see that goal, then we're going to strive to get there. Right. Yeah. 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 The goal today is that we're saved by hope. Verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose, for whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, even further, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Past tense. Amen. Past tense. Ephesians, hold your place there, so we're going to come back to that a little bit later. Let's go now to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. <clears throat> Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, past tense, already done it, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According to as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to his, according to the good pleasure of His will. Alright, let's go to Revelation, the book of Revelation. Chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. Revelation 
chapter, Revelation chapter 17, verse 8. The beast, <clears throat> the beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. Those that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life, from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Everybody on the face of the earth is going to wonder after this beast until, until, I mean, except those, everybody whose name is not written in the Babylon Book of Life before the foundation of the world. That's right. So that means that there's going to be a group of people in the end whose names were written, were written in the Book of Life yes. before the world was ever born. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 Now, if your name's not there, <laughs> now I'm not preaching that. So I just thought I'd throw that out there and see how you reacted. And now, oh, oh my God, because see, that's what the devil does. He always tells us, "Why? How you know your name's gonna be there? How your name is already there?" And the song that uh, a certain evangelist used to sing all the time when people would get saved if there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine. But see, that's not scriptural. There's no new names written down in glory. Come on now. Your name is either there or it's not there. Right. Amen. Amen. That's true. Come on now. Amen. That's true. So therefore, the Bible says that he foreknew you. You was not an accident, and I'm not an accident. Amen. God knew you a thousand years ago. Amen. Let me tell you something. If he knew a wicked king named Cyrus and had the prophet Isaiah to speak his name a hundred years before Cyrus was ever even born and told Isaiah what Cyrus would do to when God's people wound up in captivity in Babylon, which they weren't even in captivity when Isaiah, when God gave that to Isaiah. Then turn around and say, but there'll be a king called Cyrus while you're in Babylon in captivity, my people. He said, I will raise up a king and he will be a servant in my hand, and he will liberate my people and set them free so they can go back and rebuild the temple. Now, if God knew an ungodly king by name a hundred years before he was born, then how much more does he know my name and your name before you were born? Amen. In fact, he didn't just know you a hundred years before you were born. He knew you before the world was ever even created. Those things are mind boggling. I mean, my mind, my little uh, infinite mind cannot even comprehend a God that knows every human being that's ever going to be born, and I mean everyone that's going to respond to his call, everything from the end back to the beginning. He knows all that. He's omniscient. That's right. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. Yes. yes. Nothing ever happens and he has to say oops like we've heard before. <laughs> <laughs> Your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life before God ever even created the world. That's right. He had you and I in mind back when he formed the world and it was in chaotic condition. Yes. He looked down through the corridors of time and he saw our generation. He knew what would be going on right now 6,000 years after the fall of Adam. He knew exactly what was going to be happening. Amen. Amen. He knew you were going to be here in the 20th and the 21st century. Amen. No, you're not born out of season. You're born right now when you're supposed to be here. Amen. We just laying some foundation. We're going somewhere. <laughs> I think foundation pretty good while y'all <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God's got a good foundation for us, hasn't he? The reason I'm taking my time is because this needs to sink into us. 
The Bible says, God said, let us make man in our image. Yeah. Well, God's a spirit. Yeah. Doesn't have an image. <laughs> now look how y'all looking at me. <laughs> Can we go on? <laughs> what was he talking about? I know that this is applicable to different ways, but the way that the Lord gave it to me was the fact he said, look, he said, I had you in my mind years before the world was ever even created. You were in my thoughts. God had everything in his mind. He had everything already there. We was images in God's mind before you was ever even created. God was the only one that had the power to image things in his mind. He was the only one that had the power to take that image and imagine what it would be like to have that image in reality. God created us in His image. And guess what? He's created us and we're the only creatures that God has ever created that has the power like God did to have images in our mind and we can imagine what it would be like to be that way. Oh my God, I'm about to blow up. But see, God used His image. He used His imagination. He had it all in here. Then he said, you know what, I think I better just put this into practice and bring this, put something in motion and bring this image, my imagination, bring it into existence and get the thing rolling. Because I want everything in here, I want it out of here and in here. Out here. Yes. 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 So how did God do that? What you are sitting there imagining right now, I have no idea. Some of you are probably imagining hamburgers. Somebody, some of you might be imagining a bed that you're going to rest in when you leave. Somebody, but see, whatever you imagine, I'll never know that. Unless you take your mouth and you put into words that that is in your mind that you're thinking about. Amen. Huh? So God... Who, he's not a brain now. So, you know, there's a group out here that says God's just a brain. No, God ain't a brain. He's spirit. Yes. Now, how you know he does have a brain? <laughs> but he's not a brain. <laughs> but in God's mind, the Bible plainly tells us he has a mind. And in God's mind, there was this image. He wanted a world. And he wanted this world to exist. And he wanted the natural world and the natural things that he created to be able to express the invisible world or the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Yeah. So here he is. He has all of this in his mind. He has this image in his mind. But he wants this image out of his mind. And he wants it this, that he's been imagining. He wants it out of here. And now he wants it to be created. How does he do that? He takes it out of his mind by words. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. How did he do that? He spoke with his mouth. He spoke words yes. out of the Spirit. Out of his spirit, he spoke words that created the natural, yes. the world. Yes, amen. Yes. <laughs> Did I miss something? <laughs> I, said, I told her, I said, this is what God was giving me to preach Sunday morning. <laughs> Come on up here, we're going to just preach this together. <laughs> ever since we've been here. <laughs> Well, that means both of us can show up Sunday and just shout. <laughs> and y'all can say. I know there's just one God and one spirit and, and I know there's one boy. It should be just one boy. And what God did is he by the by his words he spoke out what was imaged in his mind or in his spirit. When he did, he said, let there be a heaven, and him and all there was. Let there be a world and an earth, and him and all there was. The words form what he said. Yes. The Bible says that all of God's words are God-breathed. Yes. 
In other words, when God spoke something, He didn't just speak words, but in His Word were the very life and the Spirit of God to create what He spoke. Let there be light. And when God, who is Spirit, spoke the Word, let there be light, or He just said, light be. Guess what? The Spirit was in the Word to create what the Word said. Amen. 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 So we know what was in the mind of God because now His mind or His image or His imagination is made visible to all of us. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Back up to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Verse 1. <clears throat> now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are presently are seen, if that's present, were not made of things which do appear. So what we're seeing right here through the Word of God, we understand by faith. We have to believe yes. what God said. Yes. But it's not all that hard. How can we doubt that God did it when we can look at Him and see it? Yes. Right. I mean, evidence is all around us what yes. God did. Now, now there's some people that it, 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 their mind is darkened and they're trying to figure out how it came out of a muck. <laughs> but I don't have to figure out how it got out of the muck. I know that God spoke it and here it is. Yeah, yeah, Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. So in the beginning, God imagined. He had an imagination and He spoke it out. And when He spoke it out, I know it started being created. Yeah, right. Then He said, let us make man in our image. I've got an image in here. I've got an imagination. I've got an image in my spirit. And let man be like my image that I've got by Him. Yes. Praise God. Yes. God's spirit. Are you a spirit from the No. God had an image of you. Yes. And before he ever did that, before he ever spoke man into existence, he backed up and he said, you know what? I got a book over here. And it's called the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm going to put everybody's name in that book. Because see, the Bible says that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Yes. And He came to die for everybody's sins on the whole face of the earth. Yes. He came to save who? Sinners. Yes. That which is lost. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. Well, did He just save me and you? No. He saved every person that would ever be born in the whole world from Adam and Eve. He saved everyone to the last one that would be born a woman in this world. Jesus saved everybody. Amen. The Bible plainly says that. Paul said not only did he die for our sins, but he died for the sins of the whole world. world. Did he die for the world? For well, God so loved the world. world and everybody that was in it. So the Lamb's book of life is Jesus' book over here, God's book over here, and the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. So when your name was put in there, then God automatically knew that the Lamb was going to come to redeem you, so He put your name down here. Your name was written down in God's book. Because before you was ever born, all these thousands and thousands of years, because he knew that Jesus was going to come in the corridors of time, God knew that he was going to send his son to save every human being. Yeah. 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 Then, therefore, your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. Yes. Yeah. And everybody else is this. Amen. The only problem is with that, the Bible says that them that he did foreknow, he predestinated. Yes. God foreknew you. Now, really driven, have you really got it in your spirit now that God foreknew you before you ever got here? Yes. That's where really most of us stand there and say, God, you said you knew me by name. God knew Moses' name hundreds of years before Moses ever got here. He knew your name before you ever showed up on the scene. Your mom and daddy didn't give you your name. God had it put in their mind. And they did what God wanted them to do. Charles William Thomas, it's not something that somebody just picked out of space. God knew me before the creation of the world. And he wanted me to be named Charles William Thomas. And he put my name in there. And that's my name. 
And you know what? Yeah. Then that he foreknew, he predestinated. Yeah. But you know what that is? God has a destination for you. Yes. Predetermined destination. Yes. God has, when he wrote your name down, he had a destination for you to arrive at down here. Yeah. 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 Look how y'all looking at me now. Yeah. Predestinated. But you had to be foreknown for him to predestinate you. Come on. Come on. How can he predestinate you or give you a destination if he don't know you? That's right. That's right. Come on. That's right. <laughs> now I know this is not your Sunday school lesson. This is me, but we can chew on it. We're of age here. Amen. 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 Yes. So what God did is though that he those he foreknew, because our name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, he foreknew us. And he predestinated us, give us a destination. Thank you, Lord. Right. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're not born into the world just to exist and try to make a living and see what kind of house you can live in, see how many kids you can have, and see what kind of clothes you can wear. And then when all this is over, you die and go to the sea, leave a little money for your kids. That's not what God has predestinated you for. You have got a destination. That's God. He's going to bring you into something down here. It's not just to live on the earth and see how much money we can make. You can drive 10 Mercedes if you want to. You can live in a house you got five garages in. I don't, it doesn't matter where you live, but that's not your destination. That's not what you were ordained for. That's not what you were called for. You're wasting your time. Right 
right here. Yeah. And he's got your name on the front page right yeah. here. The front page right here is the Lamb Book of Life. Uh, yeah. The last page right here is in the New Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Glory to yeah. Glory to yeah. Glory to yeah. Glory to Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So let me ask you something. If your name is here, and your name is back here, then all the rest of this stuff is just things that's going to happen to you, that God is going to call you, and then He's going to get you out of that mess, and then He's going to justify you. When He calls you, He justifies you. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm glad we're here, because we can preach the truth here. You try to preach this in some churches, they're going to get up and walk out. But let me tell you something. When God predestinated, He foreknew me, He predestinated me for a destination, then He called me. And when He called me, He called me. And then He called me again. And He called me. And then He called me. And He called me. And He called me. And I'm trying to share you that. And I need to say this. And I don't say it boastfully, because it's just to express God's grace yeah. and long suffering. Amen. I literally, because my my dad told me that you know what, you got to give your life to God. No wonder you're going through all the mess you're going through, because God got His hand on your life. Unless you give up this stuff, you'll always go through this torment. Because yeah. <laughs> God got His hand on your life. Yeah. Amen. I was on drugs. My life falling apart. The devil destroyed me. I literally balled up my fist and shook it up to God and said, Keep your blankety blank hands off of my life. You're running me. See, you can feel that in here. But I'm not stopping right there. But a loving God, a long suffering God, a patient God, a graceful God said, No, I'm not going to take my hand off your life. No, I got a death. Yes. Purify me. Yes. 
I didn't have to beg him because he'd already shed that blood before the foundation of the world to cover me when the time came. Predestinated. Then you know what he did? He did a strange thing as far as humans is concerned. After he called me, and after I finally surrendered and said, yes, Lord, then he turned around and he said a strange thing. I'm going to justify you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just act like that you've never even done anything wrong, that you never missed me, you never got out of my will. I'm just going to justify you just as if you had never even gone astray. Amen. Amen. So when people come up to me, they don't do this anymore. But they used to come up to me and say, I remember you, you were that red-headed man and you used to drive that truck with mean as a devil. <laughs> Not me. Not me. I'm justified. <laughs> that man's died. He's dead. He's dead. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. I was bought for the price. Amen. Now I've been born again. Yeah. Since I've been born again, my old life don't count. Right. 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 Let me tell you something. Have you ever seen any creditors going out to the tomb and trying to get some money off of a dead person? <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> Let
and be at one with him. Jesus came into the world. He was predestinated. He was foreknown. He was predestinated. And he was born into the world. But the ultimate goal was that he might be glorified. Yes. Yes. Glorified. You can look it up in your Bible. Glorified means to recognize a person or a thing for what it really is by its nature. Yes. Amen. Let me say that again because we, we need this to sink in. Yes. Amen. It is to recognize a person or a thing for what it really is by its nature. Yeah. Jesus, when he was on the earth, people, he was not glorified while he was here because nobody really knew who he was. Right. Isn't that right? Now, there was a few that recognized that he was the Son of God, the Messiah, but let me know he still was not in his glory yet. Right. I'm not losing you. No. Because, see, glory, God's glory, which we talked about the day we on this last Sunday in, in, in Exodus 34, is the fact that his glory is his nature. Yes, right. Jesus came as the express image of God's glory, which he expressed God's nature to the world. He was exactly like the Father. Yes. Right. Our destination is not going to be complete until we're all in the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 That's the glory. Yes. Being like Him. Yes. Not just wearing sandals. Not just in body form. Not just to get a glorified body. But, but we may be like Him in nature and mannerism and all of that is about our character. It's just like Him. Let me tell you something. The end of this thing is going to be a whole bunch of people walking on the face of the earth and Jesus is going to be here and we're all going to be just like Him. Thine 
own self, that I may glorify thee. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, Father, reveal your very nature and characteristics so powerfully yeah. through me that everybody's just going to really know who you are and what you are by your yeah. very nature. Yeah. And then come in and glorify me and let them know that I'm your son and I'm here to be the express image of you through my very person. Yeah. Then Paul turns around and he tells us, hmm. <laughs> go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4. You say, you lost me. No, I'm we're planting seed now. You ain't got the revela revelation of it yet. We're planting seed. It'll come up. Amen. Amen. This is what it says right here. Verse 13, chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. <coughs> Excuse me. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. speak. Let's go back a little bit. Abraham believed what God said about him. So therefore he spoke. I am Abraham. Yes, yes. Father of many nations. Yes. He'd have been stupid to have said that and ignorant to say that if he didn't believe what God said. That's right. Amen. But because he believed it, he spoke it. Yes. Amen. Amen. And this also is a reference back to Psalms, if you want to run the reference on it, and it's prophetic of Jesus. Yes. Jesus did not come into the world knowing everything. Right. Right. He didn't. He grew. The Bible says he grew in wisdom and knowledge. Yes. And faith with God and faith with man. Yes. He also, the Bible says that he went to the mountain of transfiguration and Moses and Elijah came and shared with him things pertaining to his death that he didn't know. Or if he'd already known it, he'd say, what are y'all doing? How would do that? Right. Yeah, right. Right. Uh-huh. He didn't know. Right. What he knew was what was written of him. You need to get this. Yeah. You need to get this. I need to get this. And we need to get this. What Jesus knew about himself was what was written of him. Yes. Amen. He stood there and said, they're going to kill me and kill this temple, destroy this temple, but in three days I'm going to raise it, raise it up again. He spoke this, the temple of his body. Well, how did he know that? How did he know that? The Word says so. He told them, he said, to illustrate this, that I know this is going to happen because you take the sign of Jonah. Jonah was three days and three nights in the bed of the well, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. He knew there were prophesied that he would be there in the third day he raised. Yeah. He believed that, so therefore he spoke, spoke it out. Yes. He stood up in the synagogue in Luke chapter 4, and he said, he declared the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to open the eyes of the blind, to, re to set the captive free, to liberate those that are bound, and set the captive free. And he goes on and says that, and he's quoting Psalm, and where did he get that? Where did he get that? He quoted it from Isaiah. Yes, amen. How could he say that? He had no one behind eye yet. <laughs> How did he know that he was anointed to open the eyes of the blind and set the captives free? Because Isaiah prophesied and said that he was anointed. And when he came, the Messiah, he would open the eyes of the blind. How did he know that he could lay hands on the sick and the sick recover? How did Jesus know that the eyes of the blind would see out of obscurity? Isaiah prophesied that he would do that. He believed what God said in Isaiah and he spoke it out. And therefore, he believed he spoke. You know why? Jesus, growing up, read the Word. And in the Word, He saw in His mind, His image, Him being the Son of God. He, the Word, planted scenes in His mind and in His heart. I'm not talking about His head. I'm talking about the spirit of His heart, mind of His heart. The Word planted something on the inside of Him. I am the Messiah. 
Yeah. I am the anointed of God. Yeah. I was yeah. born of a virgin. And you know what? God said that I would open the eyes of the blind. God said that the ears of the deaf would hear the word of the book. God said, and you know what? He could see himself doing that. Oh, he could see himself dying on the cross. He could see himself being spit upon. He could see himself bearing being blood. But he didn't do it all that because he saw what was on the other side of it. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Let me close it with this. Saints of God, if we don't see ourselves on the other side, you'll never be able to know through your cross and through your suffering and through your trial and through your death. You've got to see yourself on the other side like God. We have in the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe past him. And therefore have I spoken. We also believe. And therefore we speak. Mm. Knowing that he which raised up Jesus, Lord Jesus, shall raise us up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. And for all things, for all things are for what? For your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For which cause, for which cause, we thank not. But though our outward man perish, yet my inner man is renewed day by day. For the lot of affliction, which is but for a moment, works for me a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look at not while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Amen. For we know that if our, out, if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we grow, earnestly desire to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be stored up in life. God had in his mind an image. He had the image of the world. He had the image of the grass and the trees. And he had the image of the sea. He had the image of the feast, the fowls of the air. He had an image of man. And then he had an image of that man growing and developing and maturing and coming into the place where he was just like God. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. God for 6,000 years had been making a man in his image and in his likeness. And at the end of this thing, we shall be like him when he appears. That's what the sufferings of this present time is not even wise to be compared to the glory. I'm coming into glory. I'm coming into his likeness. I'm coming in to the house. This tabernacle is going to be changed and become the very temple of the most high God. We shall become the very habitation of God himself. Though this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have another house not made with hands. Saints of God, God's building himself a house. He's not building me a mansion, he's building him a house. He's not building me a mansion. He's building him a mansion. He's building him a house. We are the house of God. We're the household of faith. We're his house. He used to live in a tabernacle. He lived in a temple. Then he came and lived in the body of Jesus Christ. And then he lives in the body of Christ. But he's not satisfied by living in the tabernacle of the body of Christ. He wants to bring us in to the glory that we may be everlasting temple of the everlasting glorified body that God can live in and reveal himself through us just like he does through his life.
God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. And how did He do that? By not imputing their unrighteousness to them. God wiped out all sin when Jesus came. Isn't that great news? Amen. He wiped all sin out when Jesus came. Yes. But you know what? We have to go and accept that. That's right. Come on. We have to believe that. Yes. And if we believe it, then it can be reckoned unto us. Yes. But if we don't believe it, it can't be reckoned to my account. That's right. Isn't that right? right. But when we do reckon it, I mean, when we do believe it, then it's reckoned to my account, and then there's no sin, past, present, or ever future. Amen. It will be laid to my account because I'm in Christ. Yes. Oh, that means I can sin, do anything I want to. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Try it. If you're really and truly a child of God, He'll whoop you all the way to the house. I'm not, I'm not whipping you. I'm talking about whooping you. Yeah. Amen. Because those that He loves, He also whips. Yeah. And you ain't never had a whooping until God whoops you. Yeah. <laughs>
but not anymore. Right. Because Jesus came and died for all of us as the sheep. He died as the slaughter so me and you wouldn't have to be slaughtered by sin. Right. And to show you that, the very next verse, what does the next verse say? Yes. Nay, no way. No. In all these things, we are what? More than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, or powers, or even demons, it's not even in the Bible, and devils, and things present, and, or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate Ron Thomas from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. I'm telling you, who can say anything to these Down. They're only adding to your account. Because if you don't forgive me, you'll have